Good afternoon. Welcome. I, let people get their seats, but I know you also have trips to make back home. Uh, glad you could come today. I'm Lisa Melendy, the Director of Athletics. And as I said, I know it's an exciting time for you, or a little bittersweet probably in some ways to just drop kids off. Uh, but we just want to take a minute again to welcome you to our athletic family and talk a little bit about what you might expect athletically, what some of the opportunities are, and again, just to, to welcome you all to Williams. A uh, couple of pieces of business in this topic and then uh, or in this presentation and some coaches to chat with you. Um, one small business, you're going to get, um, if your student is on a roster for any team already, uh, they've been recruited, I've talked to coaches, that you're going to get an email about insurance information and a form to send back. Please don't ignore or delete that. We need that. Send that back to us. That's my, my point of business. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we have at Williams Athletically. 32 varsity teams, roughly 750 athletes competing on those teams, six junior varsity teams, as well as the opportunity to play on club teams, um, intramural sports and physical education classes. We ha still have a physical education requirement at Williams that your students will all hear about um, with broad offerings and opportunities to fill that in a lot of ways and, and learn something new um, in the meantime. We are excited about the success of our athletes and we're very much focused on um, how we define that success, which we'll talk a little bit about, and it's really focused on the personal growth of our athletes and helping them to develop as a co-curricular as part of the complement to their academic learning um, experience. Um, as I said, we're talking about defining success in a lot of ways, our academic success of our students, their engagement in the broader campus community and sometimes beyond the campus. Um, we're hoping that our, our coaches are providing, and I think they are, successful teaching, and, and again, that our students are, are growing. Um, our classrooms, we consider our fields, our rinks, our pools, our track classrooms, um, just as much as we consider our classrooms to be that, right, that indoor space. Um, we're here, and our, our coaches provide a lot of mentoring and teaching to the student athletes at Williams. Um, we're also really excited about our coaches' um, ability to impart passion for the sport and the activity and for working together as a team and in creating that excitement and that desire to, to get together and learn and grow in a different area on the campus. Um, a lot of the work that our coaches do is centered on building teams, depending upon um, the experience of, of your student athlete. Many of them have done a little bit more club or individual sport. Um, they may have played in their high school team, they may not have, but a lot of our time is centered on how our coaches getting them to understand the idea of team and working together and, um, and putting the team first, which might be different than, than has been going on during the recruiting process or during their athletic experience up till now. Um, and I just want you guys to, to know that we all want what's best for your children and student athletes, as I know you do, and that we consider ourselves all working together to support your students through, um, through their transition to Williams. And what we want to talk about a little bit briefly um, is is how can you be helpful in that tr transition? How do we support the students in that? And our coaches will be talking about how, what they do to try to help students transition from high school to college and from home to here. And a lot of that is about them becoming more independent and, and taking control of a lot of the things that they do and responsibility for what they do. Um, and just want to reassure you that you know your students are well cared for in every aspect of their experience here, that we really work hard to, to both support them and nurture them towards independence um, while also being a bit of a safety net um, when, when, when we need to be. And, you know, I know I have three children who this past year played on 15 different teams uh, between high school and club and travel. So I know what you've been through to get your student to a place where they might be in a position to play college athletics. <laughs> a lot of water bottles, a lot of meals on the road, a lot of laundry, a lot of occasionally uniforms worn dirty. Um, if we could find all the pieces. Uh, but, the, but again, I, I have been, well, I haven't been where you are yet, but I have been in the lead up uh, to that. And one of the things that I learned through watching my children do um, youth sports was sort of the difference between how a parent watches sports and how a coach watches sports. And this happened I, when my daughter was 12 or 13 and she was playing travel soccer and I was at a game that she was playing in and uh, she did not start in the game, she's not playing, and I'm watching the game. I was a soccer coach at Williams for 17 years and I'm watching the game like a soccer coach. I'm like, I see the turnover, how's the defense setting up? Okay, we win the ball, what runs are they making on offense? I'm watching the whole field, 
where's everybody who's covering, who's doing what they need to do, is everybody going to the right spot? Then my daughter came into the game, and suddenly she was the only person on the field. <laughs> and I'm watching her, and I'm watching her, and that's literally all I saw, and I really had this epiphany at that moment. I'm like, oh, that's why sometimes parents and coaches disagree about what's going on with their student and their child, because you're literally watching a different game. And you know, a coach is just taking in so much more information. Um, and so, you know, just something that for me to keep in mind as now my, you know, as a coach watching my child play sports of knowing, you know, what, what the coach should be doing and what I should be doing as a parent and trying to, trying to figure that out. Um, and we know that all of your students uh, that you have just dropped off are all overachievers. They've done, they've had a lot of success in the classroom. They've had a lot of success athletically. And, you know, perhaps sports has been a real arena for success for them. And one of the things that might happen in this transition, I know you heard about this on the academic side a little bit, is, um, you know, they may no longer be the starter of the team. They may not be the captain of the team. They may struggle to have playing time. Um, but, you know, for us, when I talked about earlier about defining success, it was a lot about what are the things you get, what are the benefits you get from being on a team that have nothing to do with the amount of minutes you play or how successful your team is, what's the inherent value. And that's why we have athletics at Williams is about that inherent value in working together and striving together and being on a team and working towards a common goal which is about the process and not about the outcome. And, and having our students you know, understand that and buy into that is what you know, we um, are, again, trying to achieve and want to partner with you um, in. And that you know, we've learned over time, our experience has been that if parents and family can accept the role that their student athlete has on the team, it's a lot easier for them to accept that role. Um, they're worried about disappointing a parent. They're already dealing with their own disappointment. You know, so it's trying to think again about how do we help them through that, what might feel like the first time that they've failed in anything, right? So um, again, our coaches are there to try to help them learn how to respond to that feeling, how to keep working, how to get the benefit of being on the team, and, and they'll talk a little bit more about that. And again, that's part of a <coughs> redefining success for them. And, and you know, I would say they've already reached quite the level of success because they've been able to be here um, and have the opportunity to um, try out for a Williams team is, is a pretty fantastic place to be. Um, so I'm going to let our coaches speak. They're each going to talk a little bit about what they do with their teams um, and some of the things that they focus on or that are important to them. Um, I have a few closing remarks, and then we'll have time for questions. Again, I know you guys, are, many of you are trying to, to get on the road. So I'm going to just introduce them all at once, and then I'll go down the line and speak. Kevin Knapp is our men's basketball coach. Megan Gillis is our women's ice hockey coach. Scott Honaker is our wrestling coach. And Nate Hoey is our women's track and field coach. And Kevin, I'm going to let just let you. Uh, uh, terrific. Well, um, first off, just wanted to, you know, one, say welcome, two, say congratulations. Uh, your sons and daughters don't get to this point. Um, get to a school like Williams College with a lot of support, and um, I know you guys are a big part of that, so you should be incredibly proud. Um, they're at a phenomenal uh, institution where they're going to quickly, in four years, um, change, and change a lot. And um, I think, as, as Lisa just pointed out, one of the biggest things we try to teach and um, why we have a great department, I think, is because we all view ourselves as teachers, first and foremost. And um, one of the biggest things we're trying to teach is, is them, uh, our student athletes, on, on how to grow. And, and a big part of that can be struggle at times. Um, as as you, know, you hear a lot of coaches uh, if you're from the Philadelphia area, you've heard trust the process with the 76ers. You've heard stay in the moment. Um, all the different things that in athletics are very, very important um, because, you know, if, you know, Williams College Athletic Department, 20 out of 22 Directors' Cups, we want to be the best at the end of the season, and we're trying to build the most successful group, the most successful team. Um, and that doesn't mean the first day of practice. It doesn't mean uh, the first game. It means at the end of the season. And, um, to do that, we need our teams to, um, you know, be present, you know, on each day, uh, be willing to adjust, be willing to grow, uh, be willing to take on different roles. And, um, you know, those are some of the main things we talk about, more so than winning, more so than X's and O's. It's, it's that. It's, all right, what's your role? What does the group need out of you? Um, what did we learn, you know, from our successes, from our failures uh, each game? You know, I'm fortunate in basketball that we have our, and most of our teams are like this, we play most of our games on the weekend. So every Monday is whether we win or won or lost, all right, what did we learn? 
All right, we're going to watch five minutes of film on, on, on the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and then we're going to work all week uh, to improve. And um, if we have that mindset, we think we'll reach our potential uh, at the end of the season. And that's really uh, what we're trying to do as, uh, as teachers, as educators, as coaches of our teams. Um, you know, briefly, what's your role in that? I think um, if you've read the book Growth Mindset, it's one of the things you know, I think coaches, it's a book coaches love, uh, educators love, because it speaks to what we try to teach. Um, you know, I think it's becoming harder sometimes uh, with so much technology. Uh, even, you know, I graduated from college in 2007, and um, even then it was very difficult for my friends and family back home um, to know what the results were outside of maybe a win or loss. They had to get it from me, uh, essentially. Now there's so much on social media um, that your friends, your family, everybody back home knows how your team did, how much you played, how much you scored. Uh, they know all the results. They know all the things you are, we're trying to tell them not to focus on. And, um, you know, that makes our job a little more difficult. Um, you know, I, I out of, I, I think I did the calculations roughly, I could have played 5,000 potential minutes as a college basketball player. I played roughly 100. And um, I had a phenomenal experience. Um, and I think as, as parents, one thing to think about, uh, I guess my advice, um, I have a 10-month-old, so I have, you know, keep telling myself to write my own advice down, so when they get to be 18, 19, I actually remember it. But um, I think first, a couple things to think about. One, what types of questions over the next few years do you ask them? Um, you know, is it about them? Is it about their playing time or points or uh, results-based stuff? Or is it about, you know, how's, how's the group looking? You know, how are you getting along with your teammates? How are the captains? What are you guys learning? What are you um, working on right now as a group? Uh, so I think taking some time to think about what types of questions um, you ask them. As, as Lisa pointed out, I think, you know, we feel a lot of times guys and girls are, are working hard and, and enjoy being a part of the team. Sometimes it becomes difficult when they're getting feedback from, um, from people that aren't here. And, um, you know, so I think spending some time on your end thinking about how you ask questions and what those questions say. Uh, and then also what are your own individual expectations? Um, you know, if your expectations are, you know, your son or daughter to be the star, to be the leading scorer, to be the captain, um, you know, there's a chance when everybody else has done that in the past too, it might not happen. Uh, and I go back to my own career, my own parents. Um, I actually just got a letter in the, in the mail um, small world type scenario, but uh, essentially it was from a restaurant owner in Ithaca, New York. I went to Cornell University um, and they saw somebody with a Williams hat in the restaurant. They went up to him, asked him if they knew who I was and could pass on a note to me. And I got the note thinking, this is great. You know, I got, I got fans all over the world, right? <laughs> um, the, the note said, Kevin, you know, we know you've, we followed your career since you left Cornell. Um, you know, we've, we're proud of you. We, you know, wanted to get in touch real quick. Uh, but the real reason we're writing is because we wanted um, to tell your parents we said hello. Uh, <laughs> so my parents became, um, you know, built meaningful relationships. I think that's, you know, you, sh you all should be excited too because if you really dive in and enjoy the next four years of your son's and daughter's careers, um, you're going to make lifelong friends and relationships. And um, my parents, again, 100 out of 5,000 potential minutes. Uh, they came to 25 of my 30 games my senior year, um, never once expecting to see me play. Uh, and when they did, they said, ooh, um, Kevin's in the game. So, and I, they probably preferred I didn't play because then they didn't have to worry about if any shot went in or not. Um, but, uh, you know, so I think those are two things, you know, on your end that you can do to, to make your son or daughter's experience even that much more uh, enjoyable because it's, it's going to be. They're going to make great friends. Um, they're going to become young men, young women that are going to do uh, spectacular things once they leave here in four years. Um, and I can say that. It, it flies by. Uh, my, my wife keeps getting told, obviously, with a 10-month-old, the days are long, but the years, are, the years fly by. Uh, she's not... She doesn't believe any of you uh, that tell her that right now. But, um, you know, so it's going to fly by. So enjoy it and enjoy it. And uh, we're going to work our hardest to do our part.
Like Kevin said, um, first of all, welcome and congratulations. I know that it takes a lot of time and effort to get to this point, and I think the nice piece is that you get to sit back and relax a little bit now. Uh, you don't have to drive them anymore. Uh, you don't have to clean their gear. Uh, you get to enjoy just being a spectator, and I think for them, they also get to enjoy playing a sport in the purest sense, finally. Um, they're not wondering, oh, what, what coach is coming to my game? What college coach is gonna be there? What club team am I playing on next? Where's, where's my life going after in sport? It's now they're here, this is uh, you know, the pinnacle of what they've been trying to do. And I think have fun with them with that and enjoy that experience and be really grateful for that. That's what we do is we try and take sport and you know, all the life lessons that come with playing, playing sports and then we help prepare them for the post-collegiate endeavors after. And um, I went to a NESCAC school too, so I'm a jock nerd and I have my cheat sheet here, so don't mind if I look down. But I think the biggest thing um, that we talk to you know, them about is, all right, today's day one of a new chapter, a new journey. And I'm sure for a lot of you, the time between the first day that they started high school to the last day went by really quickly. And I think the same thing happens at college. So um, we wanna do everything we can through the next four years to help them grow and develop. And so one thing that we do um, you know, on our team, like a lot of these coaches, is we have core values. And our core values, we talk about what it looks like when you're exhibiting those and what it looks like when you're not exhibiting those. And that creates a common language. And through the common language, we can you know, really work and define what team success is and what it looks like when we're picking each other up. And it allows them, I think, to fail and have setbacks and have ways that they can communicate with us and with each other uh, and not get too stressed about those little setbacks and see them for the good things that they can be for them. And um, for us, we meet with them on the day of the month that coincides with their number. So if you're number nine, you're gonna meet with me on the ninth and we'll talk about you know, their individual goals and really specifically what they wanna to do to get better and how they're gonna make that happen. But then we force them to take it a step further and say, why does that help the team? And how does that help the team? And if you're not successful with that, um, what does it look like? And when you are successful with that, what does it look like? So really, you know, pouring through all of that and, and having them become a better player, you know, than they were when they originally got here, but most importantly, um, becoming a better person and more well-rounded than they were when they originally got here. And so I think for me, um, that's what's fun and, and that's what our job is all about is seeing them grow as people. And I know that, um, you know, it can seem stressful at times, but you guys play a huge role in the feedback loop and um, just being there for them and supporting them and then pushing back and telling them, you know, you're transitioning to a point where um, you're gonna be going out and getting a job or going to med school or law school or wherever you want after this and you have to become your own best self-advocate and, you know, they're the ones driving the bus and, and this is their life and their journey. And so, you know, that's what we try and do is and empower them and um, make them, you know, make good decisions but be okay when they make the wrong decision and um, let them work through that and figure that out for themselves. And one of the nice things at Williams um, is that we're pretty spoiled. We have a you know, full-time strength and conditioning staff. So if they wanna do a better job in the gym, they have that. We have a college nutritionist. If they wanna learn how to eat well in the dining hall, they can meet with them. If they feel like you know, between the ears is really holding them back, they can meet with a sports psychologist. So they have access to all of these things while they're here. And I think just um, supporting them to be the one that reaches out to a coach or, or one of those support staff members is what's gonna help their career develop and be better um, in the long run. And I think just the last thing um, for that is, I know you don't wanna think about this on the day that you drop them off, but being a part of the team is such an important factor when you know, I'm writing recommendations and I'm, you know, calling and employers are asking me about what they're like as people on the other end. So there's so much good that comes from, you know, being a part of these teams and um, seeing them evolve and, and develop and, you know, grow. And how we define that success, like Lisa said, um, is really about, you know, what brings them to that point um, at the end of these four years and, and what they've learned that they can take with them after. So uh, congrats again and, and enjoy the ride with them. I'm Scott Honecker. I'm the head wrestling coach here. Um, I 
throughout this process from the time a commitment is made and then at drop off today and over the years, I hear a lot of congratulations passed your way. And I, and I feel compelled to talk a little bit on the other side about the privilege we feel as coaches to um, spend the time, have the impact, and build the relationships with your sons and daughters. On a personal standpoint, you know, outside of being a good father and a good husband, the single greatest privilege in my life is, is the time I get to spend with the men on my team and the students I build relationships with on campus. And so if, if anything rings along with that, uh, I just wanted to share a, a reminder that your goals for your sons and daughters are, are our goals for your sons and daughters. And sometimes it plays out differently um, in the short term. The, the, the pursuit of those goals, but in reality, we're all using the pursuit of excellence in sport as a conduit for delivering better young men and women through this four-year experience, and, and I, I would be challenged to believe that you know, that doesn't ring true with everyone in this room. So it, it's just a reminder, as, as we're working with, with the, the young men and women who we are so privileged to spend this time with, that we're all pushing in the same direction your goals are our goals, and um, we, you know, we couldn't be more excited to be doing what we're doing. So it was a, that was a little briefer than, than my peers here, but <laughs> um, you know, just wanted to share that message with you, and thank you all for your time. So you certainly hear a lot of um, common threads between all of these uh, discussions that we have and, and, and the thoughts. And, for us, uh, again, I'm Nate Hoey, I'm the head women's track and field coach. Any chance I get to have to talk about our team and our philosophy, I'm all in, you know, sign me up. But um, our, our mission, if you will, every day is we want student athletes that want to set really high goals and aspirations and want to pursue excellence on a daily basis in chasing those goals and aspirations. But our definition of success is not the result. Our definition of success focuses on who they become as a result of the chase, who they become as a result of the pursuit of those goals and those aspirations. And that's where we live, you know, being present, being where we're at today, putting us in a better position um, down the road. And we have really high goals every year. We want to have, uh, be in a position to compete for a conference championship, a regional championship, and a national championship. But again, whether we achieve that or not isn't our definition of success. Um, how do we do that? How do we get there? You know, every day we just focus on what we can control. And every single day we can control our effort, our attitude, our execution, being a great teammate, and letting go of the fear of failure. And what I mean by that, you know, from attitude, you know, being a positive team first individual. Um, having a positive outlook doesn't mean negative situations and challenging situations won't arise, they will certainly come up. But when you're surrounded with positive people, they're going to remind you of what you're striving for and get you back on that path. Um, when we talk about effort, um, it's being intentional about what we do, being intentional about your training, intentional about your schoolwork, intentional about how you're living, making sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, again, we are in, as the individual, is in control of that. Um, execution would be, you know, maybe it's striving for a technical model in a field event or striving for a race model on the track or when they're studying, turn the phone off, put it away and have a good quality productive work session. Um, again, we're in control of that. Um, being a great teammate, you know, we want to lift each other up with positive words and actions, make your teammate the very best they can be, because then they in turn are going to mirror that and help you be the very best that you can be. Um, you know, we work to have a balanced, well-rounded, and deep team, and sometimes their biggest competition at a conference, regional, even a national level could be a teammate, and that's a, a, an interesting dynamic to have, and you know, so we talk all the time about never having a pecking order. If Scott and I are in the same event and we're racing each other, if he beats me at one meet, I have to give him his due and then I can go back to coach and debrief what went well, what can I do better. Then next time maybe I win, he gives me my due and then he goes back to coach, debriefs what went well, what can he do better. That to us is a positive, healthy, team working uh, environment versus what sometimes can be a very uh, negative me versus you mentality. And so that's a really important thing. Um, and always lifting each other up and, and helping each other be the best they can be. And foundational to everything is what I like to call letting go of the fear of failure. Um, and what I mean by that is everybody needs to know that their value as a team member 
their value as a person doesn't go up or down based on a result, based on how they perform, how fast they run, how far they throw. That value stays the same because as, as soon as you need external validation, meaning, oh, I gotta run this time, once I run this time, my teammates will think more of me, my coach will give me more attention, my parents will be more proud. As soon as they need that external validation, it's this immense pressure that, and I was the poster child of this my early years in college, <laughs> where you see them just training like a champ and, but can't quite replicate it in a meat environment. Um, but as soon as they can let go of that fear of failure and know everybody is there for them no matter what happens with that result, it is an incredibly freeing feeling to actually let them go out there and replicate what they're doing over and over again in a training environment and execute their race plan or their technical model and put themselves in a really good position to achieve that big aspiration that they're striving for. So how can you help with this? You know, when they're calling and when, it's not if, but when they hit those speed bumps and those challenges, just reminding them of be consistent. You know, everything that you do, it's about consistency. You know, if it's training in, with intention consistently, studying with intention consistently, uh, working on that lab report or constantly re-editing that paper with consistency, in the long run, it's all gonna work itself out, but everybody's path is a little bit different and just kind of focusing on their path. That's a really important thing of having that um, presence and hearing that from you. Um, and then the students that are here, I just wanna say uh, a big welcome that you're about to experience what I'm sure you've read and heard so much about of that Williams is just an amazingly supportive environment once you're here. And when you do hit those challenges or those speed bumps, there's so many resources that were, were talked about already. Um, talk to your coach, talk to your professors, deans, you know, we, we have sports psychologists and nutritionists, nutritionists, excuse me. There's so many resources here to help you. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. Like, that's why we're here. Everybody grows and gets better um, through the speed bumps that we have. It won't always be nice and smooth. And um, so welcome, we're super excited that you're here and uh, looking forward to the year ahead. Thanks coaches, I think you would agree they're uh, a great group and this is a small sample of the 27 head coaches we have, um, all with, uh, with lots of strengths and real, true caring and passion for working with the student athletes. Um, it's pretty exciting and I get to work with them which is lots of fun for me. A couple other things to just uh, be mindful of um, as now a part of our Williams family and you put on the Williams gear and you go to away events or you come here, um, that now, you know, when you're wearing the Williams hat, then people identify you with Williams. And just like you can't pick your in-laws, uh, you know, <laughs> you're, you're all a part of us now and you reflect on us. Uh, so we just ask our, you to know, think about being good hosts and good, displaying good sportsmanship at home and when you travel to other, um, to other um, institutions, other colleges and universities. Um, and that at NESCAC, sort of uh, a new rule uh, as of last year because of some altercations between some fans, uh, we ask you, they were not ours, but we always worry about that. Uh, you know, they do, we'd ask you not to put banners up, Williams banners up at away events, um, and just a chance to let you know that and just remembering that, you're, that you represent us. And we really hope that when people talk about Williams that they're talking about, they're all positive things, including the way that we conduct ourselves in the stands, that we're not yelling at officials, we're not yelling at opponents, we're not yelling at our child or their teammates, um, that it's all positive. Um, encouraging type of, of stuff and that you just get to, as Megan said, just sit back and cheer and be a fan um, and we really you know, hope that you can join us in that. Um, with that too, we're working hard as a college to, to address the alcohol issues that come with college and decouple them from athletic events. We ask you not to bring alcohol to athletic events or serve if sometimes parents bring stuff for teams afterwards that you leave that at home. Um, as they've talked about a little bit, I want to assure you that a lot of things are available to help your student athletes in their time here. Um, we work hard to make sure that we're meeting their nutritional needs on campus and when they're traveling, um, equipment needs. For some students, um, meeting some of the equipment needs of things they have to purchase themselves can be hard. I understand that. We have a fund in our department to help students um, for whom buying some of the equipment that they need to buy themselves um, is a hardship. So check out with your coaches or with um, my assistant Karen Ware on how to get some financial assistance there. Uh, you know, we're trying to, again, meet those needs and take care of our students as best that we can. Um, occasionally, parents send emails to each other. I don't know if you've already gotten them as first year parents from parents of upperclassmen um, that might be saying, hey, we're doing this tailgate, or here, send money for this, or we're gonna buy this stuff. You should know that that's 
totally optional. You should not feel obligated or you're odd man out if you aren't sending money to something. Again, your students are cared for. Their equipment is provided. Their meals are paid for. Um, so there isn't this need for you to necessarily add on to that. And I know sometimes people feel pressure when they get those. So I just wanted to, to note that. Um, and again, I'm sure that we will have a great year. We'll have our normal ups and downs. There'll be moments of great joy and moments that are tougher um, that we will be here to help them get through along with other support on campus and their new friends and JAs and, and people that are here, as I said, to hold them. And again, they'll call you and, and I know you'll be telling them that it's going to be okay and they're going to get through it. And as they said, just, you know, pointing them. I think a nice thing too is to think about pointing them to help. Um, some of our students have trouble asking for help. They're not used to that. They may have just, everything may have been fine. They may have succeeded without any bumps in high school. Um, so letting them, reminding them, hey, isn't there a counselor? Can't you go to the dean and talk about your academics? Ask your coach about, you know, who, you know how you might see, how are you going to get more sleep? All those kinds of things. Um, and we're just really excited. It's such a fun time of year. So the day we really kind of, it's really marks sort of the beginning of the year <laughs> for us to get going. And we're just, you know, we're chomping at the bit to, to get back to work and, and have the students on campus. They've been working all summer to recruiting and X's and O's and going to professional development and they want to get into their lab and, and get back to work. Um, so again, thank you. Um, we'll have some time for some questions if you have any. Um, enjoy the year.